I achieved literally none of my goals. Hey stranger, I'm glad you're here. Today I'd like to help you look at your goals from a different perspective to manifest your dream life more easily. And to do that, I need you to get familiar with the term end goal. So what is an end goal? And this is just my definition of an end goal. Let's say I ask you to tell me something that you really want to achieve in your life right now. And let's say you said, I want a better career. Then I'm going to ask you again, why do you want a better career? Obviously, there could be a lot of different reasons, but let's say you said, I want a better job so I could make more money. Then I'm gonna ask you again, why do you want more money? I understand this might sound like a stupid question because who doesn't want more money, right? But having money in itself has no value unless you do something with it. So you might want more money because you want to travel, because it's your passion. Or maybe you want to support your parents financially. Or you might just want to be rich because you think people might respect you more if you're rich. Okay, let's look at these answers now. What I'm hearing from these answers is that by traveling, you want to feel excited. By supporting your parents, you want to make them happy. By being rich, you want to feel respected. See where I'm getting here? Now we found your end goals. When you go all the way down to the feelings, I can ask you, why do you want that anymore? And that's how we know that we found your end goal. An end goal is always a feeling. You don't want something for the thing itself. You never want something for the thing itself. Everything and anything you want, you want it for the feeling it gives you. Or more correctly, the feeling you think it'll give you. Because the thing that you think will make you feel a certain way doesn't always make you feel that way. That could be a good thing or a bad thing, but that's what makes life interesting. Let me tell you my story for example. A few years ago, there was a period where I was trying to be a travel influencer. And while this was an interesting experience, the trips I took on this journey were the worst travel experiences of my life. Long story short, I did not have the personality nor the talent to be a successful influencer. I really don't like getting attention, so being taken photos of in front of large groups of travelers was a really dreadful experience. And I have never had any desire to be famous, so basically the reason I wanted to become a travel influencer was because first I wanted to become a digital nomad and second I like expressing myself in a creative way and also because I like taking pictures now the last two are already end goals because they are about the way they made me feel but let's go deeper with the first one why did I want to become a digital nomad so for the longest time this was the ideal image of my life I love being near water so I wanted a job that would allow me to sit at the beach work on my laptop sipping on the cocktail you get the whole picture and I wanted more flexibility on my hours and I wanted to have a lot of free time so that I could enjoy life more and now this is the interesting part my life looks nothing like I planned it and I achieved literally none of my goals but somehow I am pretty close to living my dream life so this is what I do now I work part-time as a waitress at a restaurant it's super chill, it's 20 hours a week, so I always have a lot of free time. I love my colleagues and the venue has an amazing view over the water, so when I'm there, I don't even feel like I'm working. And I moved to Busan last year just so that I could be close to the water. And right now I live 10 minute walk away from the beach. And now that I got the beach part covered, I think that I probably wouldn't have enjoyed being a digital nomad because I really like having my own place and I don't like being on the move all the time. It's strange to think that a few years ago, I thought that being a digital nomad would be the only way that I would be at the beach all the time. And about expressing myself in a creative way, I've been doing that with YouTube and that's where I get the motivation to keep going, even though my videos usually get very few views because I really enjoy expressing myself. Lastly, the photos. Actually, the influencer phase got me a lot more interested in photography. And throughout the process, I learned that I actually enjoy being behind the camera a lot more than being in front of the camera. But currently, aside from the waitress job, I'm also a part-time portrait photographer. I've only recently started getting paid gigs and I like it okay. It's not the perfect job for me, but uh, we'll see where it goes. So there are two lessons we can learn from my experience. First, there is more than one way to manifest your ideal life. And second, knowing your end goals can help you get there much more easily. 
All right, disclaimer, I still have no idea what I want to do career-wise and I'm 31. At this point, I don't really see the point because I change my mind so quickly when it comes to a job. One thing I know for sure is that all my 20s, it's not a certain job that I've been chasing, but it's a lifestyle that I've been chasing. And right now, I'm pretty content with my lifestyle and I do a lot of things every day that makes me feel good and happy, which brings me to my next point. I'm going to give you one minute to find your own end goal. Just choose one thing that you want to achieve in your life right now and ask yourself why do I want that as many times as you need until you get the answer because I want to feel blank. I'll give you one minute. Okay, now that we found your end goal, this is what we're gonna do. We are going to ask reverse questions. Ask yourself, what experiences bring me this feeling? Because it's not just that one thing that you started with that can bring you those feelings. There are other things than troubling that can make you feel excited. There are other things than giving your parents money that can make them feel happy. There are other things than being rich that can make you feel more respected. And just start doing those things, starting with the easy ones. Even if you're someone who has a very high standard for happiness, I'm sure there are a couple of things that you can do with very little effort and money. A lot of us have been conditioned to believe that happiness and success require a lot of hard work. But I'm here to tell you it's perfectly okay to be happy with having seemingly very little in your life. I almost feel guilty about how content I feel with my current life situation and that's because I've been brainwashed by media and society to believe that at my age I should be this far in my career and I should have this much saved but being content with my current situation doesn't in any way mean that I think okay this is enough I don't need to improve my life anymore it's in the same sense that you can be a really good person already but you can always grow to be a better person each and every day for the rest of your life what I'm saying is that personal growth, whether it's about you as a person or your life, is more like a life mission that you will have till the day your life will end. And you can do it from a place of lack and obsession or a place of, okay, what I have is already good, but I wouldn't mind an upgraded version of it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.